So I'm not ashamed to admit that integration by parts used to intimidate me, but I've finally come to realize that integration by parts really is one of the best ways to transform a nasty multifunction integral into an easy solvable integral. So by multifunction integral, I just mean an integral that's got two functions getting multiplied together. I'm calling them y and z, but these could be whatever. y might be cosine of x or log of x, and z might be x squared or e to the x. So what integration by parts allows you to do, you get to take one of these functions, integrate it, put that into your new integral, and then you take the other function, take a derivative of it, and put that into your new integral, and the hope is that this new integral will be easier to solve than your previous integral. Now there is a price to be paid for integration by parts to work. There needs to be this front term right here, but this term really never gives you any trouble. The question always boils down to whether this new integral will be easier to solve or harder to solve than your previous integral. So how do you use integration by parts? Let's do an example, show you how it works. Let's say you had the integral of x times e to the x. Well, I got two functions getting multiplied together, so integration by parts might help me simplify this. And the first order of business is, I have to pick which one of these functions, x or e to the x, do I want to integrate, and which one do I want to differentiate? So up here, I've got z. I'm integrating that term, the second term, and differentiating the first term. But think about it, down here, x times e to the x, that's the same as e to the x times x. So I could move these around however I want. So I'm taking a derivative of the one I want and an integral of the one I want so that it makes my integral easier. That's the key here. So sometimes you gotta just kind of poke around and prod and think, all right, I don't know, let's see. If I took integral of x, I'd get x squared over two. That's bad, I don't wanna put that in my integral. That's even worse than x, so I don't wanna do that. Let's say I made x my y so that I take the derivative of y, and y is x, and the derivative of x with respect to x is just one, and it doesn't get much simpler than that. So I get to put one in my integral, which is great, that simplifies it. And so my other term, e to the x, will have to be z here, and I'm gonna have to integrate e to the x. Now you take integral e to the x dx, so there really should be dx's here in these integral of z terms, but I didn't wanna clutter it up. So you could probably tell what I'm meaning. You integrate the term z, and my z term is e to the x. You might worry like, uh-oh, integral e to the x, this might get bad, but it really doesn't. Integral of e to the x is just e to the x, so it didn't get any worse right here. And now I know, oh, I made a good choice. This did make my integral easier, so sometimes you gotta try this out a few times. Integral e to the x times one is better than integral x e to the x. And so step two, once you make a good choice, for what to take a derivative of and what to integrate. You just plug into the integration by parts formula. So whatever you plugged in here, this integral of z, this entire term is just gonna go right here as well in this front term. So this integral of z is the same as that integral of z. And you need the y term right here, not the derivative of y. You plugged the derivative of y into your new integral, you're just plugging raw y into this front term out here. That's how integration by parts works. And now we can just set this equal to this integral down here, x, e to the x has to equal x times e to the x minus the integral of e to the x times one. But the integral of e to the x times one is just the integral of e to the x. So it did it, I told you. Look, integration by parts made this integral that was bad into one that was easier. Integral of e to the x is easy. So I can solve it now, I get x e to the x minus, well, integral of e to the x is just e to the x. So I get e to the x, and this was an indefinite integral, so I'm gonna have to add my plus c, don't ever forget that. Now you might be like, what my homework, my homework had a definite integral, it had like limits here. What do I do then? Well, you don't need the plus c, but what you're gonna do is, if your integral that you're doing integration by parts on has limits, the new integral has those same limits, and this is important, this front term, has to be evaluated between those limits as well. So in other words, if this integral down here was zero to one, this term's evaluated between zero and one, my new integral is zero to one. Uh, long story short, you're just taking this whole term without the plus c, and you're evaluating it between zero and one. In other words, I'm gonna plug one in here, I'll get one times e to the one minus e to the one, uh, which is actually just zero, because e to the one minus e to the one is zero, minus, and then I plug my zero in, 
and I'll get zero for x times e to the zero, um, and then I get minus e to the zero, but zero e to the zero is zero, so all I end up with is negative of negative e to the zero is one, so this is just positive one. So if you have a definite integral, that's fine. Don't do the plus c. Just make sure you plug in those limits and it works out. All right, so you might be like, well, hold on, but this was an easy integration by parts problem. My homework's hard. <laughs> yeah, homework can get hard, and that's why there's a step three. There's a repeat if necessary. What do we mean by that? Well, let's say I had a different problem, a harder one. Let's say I had x squared e to the x. So I still have two functions getting multiplied. So integration by parts might help me simplify this. And I go through the steps. I do step one here. Which one of these do I want to integrate? Which one do I want to differentiate? Well, if I integrate x squared, that gives me x cubed over three. That's terrible. I don't want to put that in my integral. So I'm again going to make sure that x squared is the one I take a derivative of. So x squared is this y term. So I'm going to take a derivative of x squared with respect to x. And that's going to give me 2x. So that's what goes here. That's better. That's better than x squared was, a little better. And then this other term, e to the x, will have to be my z term. And again, I integrate it, throw it into this integral, and now I'm just plugging into the numbers here. I'm just plugging into the integration by parts formula. So my e to the x term here also has to go there. And then I have to plug in my raw y term. Again, not the derivative of y. Don't put 2x over here. The raw y term, x squared right here. And now I can just write what this integral down here is equal to. It's equal to x squared. x squared times e to the x minus integral of e to the x times 2x. So e to the x times 2x dx. You might be like, well, dang, this didn't help. I don't know how to solve this integral either. Yeah, I know. But that's why there's a repeat part here, because it got better. Look, we reduced this power of x by 1. We have to do it again. So let me let me rewrite this in a way that you might recognize it. Watch this. So I'm going to write this as x squared e to the x minus, I'm going to pull a factor of 2 out. I'm going to write this as 2 times the integral e to the x. Well, no, watch this. I'm going to write it as x. I'm going to put x first. x e to the x dx. You might be like, why do I care about that? Well, look, hopefully you recognize this. Look at this term right here. Look at this integral right here. This was the integral we just did like two minutes ago. Integral of x e to the x. What I'm saying is sometimes the integral you get out of integration by parts is not yet solvable, and you have to do another integration by parts just to solve it. So you'd have to, if we hadn't have just solved this already, you'd have to go through, figure out what x e to the x integral is by doing integration by parts just for this term in the brackets. Now, we already did it, so I don't want to bore you with the details. You get x squared e to the x minus 2 times, well, we just figured out what this was. You know, rewind the video two minutes and you realize this is going to be x e to the x minus e to the x. And then since this was an indefinite integral, you got to put your plus c right there. So to recap, the way you use integration by parts is you pick one of the functions to integrate, one to differentiate in order to make your integral easier to solve. Then you just plug into the integration by parts formula. And sometimes if the integral you get out is still not solvable, you have to repeat this once or twice in order to get an integral that's actually solvable.